All right, we're going to go over the Sprite Editor in GameMaker Studio 2. The way we get to that is you open up your Sprite and click on Edit Image. That'll pull up a tab that looks like this. GameMaker has laid this out in nine basic components. The first is the frame view, the frame information, the canvas controls, the draw canvas, the editor values, the brushes, the color picker, the tools, and the layer editor. And we're going to just cover each of the components in this editor so that we can understand them a little bit better. We're going to start right over here with, by default, the loop and this toggles the loop and the ping pong. Now this is actually a three state switch so when it's on this gray behind it means that it's on and the icon inside shows you what is on so this actually has the loop on so when we play our animation it's going to loop through the animation starting at the first frame it's going to go to the end and then it's going to come back to the first frame again. If we click on the button, again, this is ping pong, which means that it's going to go from the first to the last and then backwards to the first again. And if you click on it again, you can turn that off and it will only cycle through the frames one time. The button directly above that is onion skinning. And what onion skinning is, is it allows us to see multiple frames at the same time. Now, in an animation, each frame has been changed slightly to create the animation. So our first frame has the original image, and then the second frame has moved slightly. And you can see these movements. And when we turn onion skinning on, we see this red box up here, and it's showing you the frames that it's showing all here at the same time. So if we grab this and slide it down, you can see it, it appears to almost blur the image because it's showing all of these at the same time. And we use that so that we can see what the next frame or the frame before the frame we're working on, we can see where the pixels are so that we know what to change in order to create a fluid animation rather than guessing. Up here at the top, we can control the size of our tool. We can use the slider, or we can type it into the box. And we have the ability to click on smooth. And what smooth does, is without smooth and we draw a line we get a hard line when we have smooth on we can see that it actually takes pixels just outside of where we drew and fills them in with a transparent pixel so that when we zoom out it looks like more of a smooth line All right, right here we have a toolbar that gives us access to some functionality tools in the image editor. The first one we come to is the toggle grid, and that toggles the grid on and off. If we click on the arrow just to the right of that, we can control the grid. They've given us access to the color of the grid, so we can change that. So if we have lines that are hidden because of the color, the background color, we can see them better. We can change the transparency of the grid. We can change the grid size here. And we can turn on snap to grid so that things that we draw or put into the image snap to the grid itself. The next thing we come to is the zoom 
out and zoom in tools. And the one in the middle here is the reset. So it's going to reset that zoom. This center fit, if we get our image off center, click that, it'll pull it back to the center of our viewport. This last option is a show split view. And the way we use that is we can either split it horizontally or split it vertically. We're going to split it horizontally. And in this view, we can actually zoom in to one, leave one zoomed out. We can move one around. And this way we can see a little bit more detail on this one, see the overall view on this one. Just gives us some options on how we view things. To go back to the original, click on No Split and make sure it's centered. The brushes work the same as most other graph graphical programs, the top being the square brushes, the bottom being round brushes. The first one is the smallest one, and then we increase in size as we go from left to right. You're under your colors, the first one is the eraser to erase things, or transparency. All the other ones indicate the colors that you're going to choose. If you want to choose a color, you can left or right click on that color. If you left click, it'll set the left mouse button. If you click the right, it'll set the right mouse button. We do have a palette of used colors down here. So if we select another color, we see it just adds it to this palette. So we don't have to find a color that we've used in the past on a sprite. And it does give us the option right here to import colors from a different sprite or copy colors to a different sprite. And that allows us to, to select the same colors that we're using in a sprite to another sprite. Many of the tools are common tools that we see in graphic software, like the paintbrush tool, the eraser, the fill tool. We do have this color remove tool, and the way we use that is once it's selected, we click on the color we want to remove and left click, and it removes all of that color. And we can do that multiple times to remove a gradient of colors. We also have a color replace tool. When we use that, it's going to replace it with the color that we have selected. So if I want to replace all of this light green with a purple, I'll left click and it'll replace that. I can also right click and it'll replace it with blue. We have the line tool, which draws lines. Um, on these tools down here with the solid line going in a diagonal, these are actually two different tools that are similar to each other. So for instance, this one, if you click on the top, it's a rectangle tool with an outline. If you click on the bottom, it's a rectangle tool filled. So if you want to draw a rectangle filled, you would select that bottom. And if you just want to do the outline, you would select the top. Same thing with the ellipse tool and the polygon tool. They have the arc tool, the text tool, we can use the text tool to type. The color picker is to get a specific color, and you can right click or left click to do that. We have the rectangle select tool, which just selects rectangles, and we can use that to copy things like that, cut out pieces of your. The paint selection tool works like the rank rect works like the rectangular selection tool. Only instead of drawing a rectangle, we can left click and hold and it'll select just like you were painting.
the magic wand tool will select all of a specific color. So when we select a portion of the sprite, I'm going to use the rectangle selection tool for this. You can also use the paint selection tool if you like. But when we select that, and then we click on the rotate brush tool, if you notice right up here under your brushes, you'll see that selection. And so we can rotate that using that tool. We can flip the brush. We can mirror it. So with this brush tool, We'll set it like it's close to this hand here. And then we'll click where we want it. And we can see that it adds that just like we were drawing it. Now, one thing that Game Maker has, Game Maker Studio 2 has, is layers. So it's very similar to the way Photoshop is set up, if you're familiar with Photoshop. Right down here, we can add a layer, and the layer on the bottom can be, say, your background layer, and the layer on top will be, let's call it the foreground layer. The layer on the top is going to show over the layer on the bottom. We can turn the view on and off, so if you don't want to see what's on the bottom layer, you just click that eyeball and turn it off and on. If you want to set up a layer group, we can set up a layer group and put layers inside of that group to get organized, just like with a sprite group. And we can draw on these layers so that they're independent of each other. So if I click on this now, with it being in layer one instead of the default, we can toggle that on and off rather than putting it on our base layer and not being able to arrange it. So that way we can go in and we can move it around and tweak it the way we want to tweak it. By right clicking on the layer, we can add a layer, we can add a group, we can delete a layer, we can create a duplicate of layer, we can merge layers which means take this layer and it will put whatever's on this layer on the layer below it if we merge down. If we click on merge all layers, it will flatten this image out and make all of the layers into one layer. Under the layer properties, we can name the layer, we can change the blend modes, and we can change the opacity of the layer. I'm going to move over to another sprite I've created. It's just a blank sprite, just to show you one other really neat feature in Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, so I selected this white, and what we're going to do is we're going to create more frames that are blank with nothing on them by clicking this plus button. So here we have 12 frames. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw on the canvas while the canvas is playing uh, like it's animated already. And what this is going to accomplish is it's actually going to allow us to draw on frames as they're being played. So we can see that we've got the loop on, and so it's going from first to the twelfth frame. And as that's happening, I'm going to draw on the frame. And you can see I'm just clicking and dragging, drawing lines. And what we end up with is an animated 
sprite that we've created without going from frame to frame. In the past, what we would have to do to do this is we would start with this frame. We would draw on it each pixel that we have here colored and go to the next frame. Erase, draw each one. Now we can animate just simply by playing it and drawing on it as it's played. Mm -hmm.